live from New York. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Q. Covering Rapid Minor Wisdom 2016. Brought to you by Rapid Minor. Now, your hosts, Dave Vellante and Jeff Frick. Welcome to New York City, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. And we're here in New York City at the Rapid Minor Wisdom Conference 2016. This is our first event of 2016. We had the deep dive with uh, Mark Hurd last week. Uh, actually, we just released it this week, so you saw that with John Furrier. Uh, this is an event, a conference for data scientists, like serious alpha geeks at this show. Uh, Rapid Miner is a company that does end-to-end -end predictive analytics. Uh, really a lot of people uh, in the space, of course, trying to simplify analytics. Rapid Miner is a leader there. They've got an open source platform that they name Monetize at the back end. Uh, just re recently raised, uh, Jeff, you were telling me $16 million, uh, I guess from Nokia. And uh, so we heard this morning from uh, their CEO, Peter Lee, who's coming on later on this afternoon, uh, and uh, Ingo Mirswa, who's their founder, very um, entertaining. Uh, speaker, uh, and, and uh, we also heard from uh, uh, Professor Weissman from uh, UMass Boston, uh, Boston, David Weissman, talking about his perspectives on, uh, on data. We're hearing a lot about you know, data and misinterpreting data. You always hear that at these data science conferences that I'm struck by uh, uh, Ingo, you know, put up a, a slide and he showed a spike in uh, 1993 of alien sightings, and he said, you know, he asked the audience, why, why is that? And of course the answer was because that's the year that the X-Files <laughs> came out, so people started seeing, showed some other data. Um, and so of course aliens love X-Files, that was the interpretation tongue in cheek. You know, the point being that, you know, the data can tell a story, but sometimes it's misinterpreted and doesn't really tell the right story. The other thing is he showed a spike in alien sightings on July 4th, of course, the conclusion there is aliens love Americans. So, <laughs> so that was, it was good fun. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I think Rapid Miner really is in the business of helping people try to make sense out of data and try to improve the accuracy of, of those conclusions. And so, so Jeff, first event this year, great to see you in New York. You know, thanks for flying out with the yeah, team. Yeah, it's good and, to see uh, you, Dave, first time. And I'm just kind of struck by last year we kicked off 2015 in New York City. You were, you were here at the IBM System Z launch, you know, talking about mainframes and bringing old school mainframes into the modern era of, of a lot of the new applications. Now we're at a, a really small conference, really heavily focused on data science, but still kind of continuing on with this beat as this transformation, this digital transformation continues within our industry. So it's exciting to be here. It's, it kind of shows the, the breadth and depth of the things that we covered, and we're looking forward to another great year. The, the thing on the data science that always strikes me, right, is the, always the causality versus correlation. Um, and, the, and the one that was referenced earlier, right, is height is a great predictor of, uh, of reading skills, of course, because it ties to age. But, but what goes into that is even though maybe it's not direct causality, if it is a predictor, is causation still okay if it's a predictor for whatever you're trying to achieve? I think that's a, kind of an interesting thing I want to follow up because we know uh, correlation is such a big deal. The other thing that I find really interesting is this progression from right, data science. This is a hardcore data scientist show, but we talked a lot last year and we'll talk today about the citizen data scientist. How do you get, how do you realize the dream of getting the, the information to the business analysts to the people that are making decisions and out of what traditionally was that kind of the hallowed halls of the, the PhDs uh, and, and, and the, the heavy duty lifting guys. At the other end of the spectrum now we've got more and more machine learning. And I'm fascinated every day by what Google throws up on my on my phone and their predictive um, uh, things about where I am, who, you know, suddenly it'll tell me how much time it's going to take me to go to work or where I parked my car. I never asked it to tell me where I parked my car. And it'll tell me, you just parked your car here and here's a map <laughs> so you can find it when you finish. Are so, you on your way home? Yes. Yes, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, we, we've always had kind of the data scientists in the middle. Uh, there's a real vision to get that power downstream to the business analyst and then now we've got the computer and the machine learning on the other side and it's an interesting, kind of mesh of where this is all headed. Well, it's interesting you brought up the, uh, the IBM Z event that we did uh, almost exactly a year ago at Jazz at Lincoln Center, awesome event. It's like the other end of the spectrum, right? The big, giant mainframes. But the interesting theme of that event was bringing analytics and transaction systems together. What, what, and when we talk about building so-called systems of intelligence, a concept that George uh, Gilbert has been promoting you know, on Wikibon, and certainly we borrowed that from Jeffrey Moore, but we've advanced that that, 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 that notion of systems of, 
of intelligence to include bringing transaction and, and analytic systems together to directly affect the business outcome. And one of the things that we're seeing is, you know, one of the big questions that practitioners have, or we have really, that we talk to practitioners about is, are these greenfield apps, are these predictive solutions and machine learning, you know, that involve machine learning, are they greenfield, new, clean apps, or are you sort of blending them with existing applications? And, and what's the right model for that? I mean, to the extent that you can bring your transaction systems and your systems of record together with that predictive you know, learning, you, you are going to get, in ostensibly anyway, better data and be able to act on that. You know, or, or in fact, if you have you know, greenfield you know, apps that are somewhat disconnected from those systems of record, you've got some challenges there. The other thing that we're looking at is, you know, how much time is actually spent, and we heard this today, cleaning the data, uh, and, and essentially, uh, uh, a cleaning the data to fit the algorithm versus bending the algorithm to fit the data. And I'm interested in what RapidMiner customers are doing in that regard. We're going to talk to, to several about that. We, we heard today about different organizational models. Professor Weissman was talking about that, decentralized versus, versus decentralized. Um, and so, and, and, and how to make those you know, decisions about where to invest. Because it seems, based on what I heard this morning, Jeff, there really are two vectors. One is the, the business case, the ROI. Uh, and the other is the technical feasibility and right. the risks associated with that. And so I'm curious as to, you know, who's sort of driving the decision? Is it the, is it, you know, everybody's going to say it's the business, but technical feasibility is fundamental to this and the lack of data science skills is obviously a challenge for many organizations. So how are those decisions being made? Is, are people picking off the, the, the easy ones first that may or may not deliver the greatest ROI, but to try to develop that machine learning data science skill set you know, or are they going after the hard problems and the big ROI? Yeah, he, he hit on a bunch of things. Another one of the things, he talked about the magic happens when you start with the business objectives, which seems patently obvious, but it, it's just not the way. We hear a lot of these shows and people are talking about the technology and the tools and the fun and people like to get into the, to the Hadoop and Spark and real time and in memory and all this stuff, as opposed to really talking with what are some measurable business and objectives and now when we can perform against that objective, now everybody kind of buys in and you can see the ROI. But the other thing I, f I still find fascinating is, is kind of the purity, and he talked about the difference between data science and IT. Very different, very different points of view, very different fields. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of, of, of ways you can present the data, and <laughs> he went through a bunch of examples, to really support whatever it is that you're trying to get across. And, and while behind the scenes, you know, somebody who really knows what they're talking about, he talked about ads, you know, where is the data, what's the correlation, where are you getting these percentages, but unfortunately, I don't know that that's necessarily always brought to the forefront if you're really trying to make your case. So it's one thing internally, you're driving to an ROI decision, but so often we see numbers thrown around just randomly uh, where you don't really know what the basis is, you don't really know. So I think there's some, there's some really uh, kind of ethical issues and really presentation issues that are going to impact the way that this is, is uh, kind of developed and, and embraced by the marketplace. Well, Weissman showed a, <clears throat> a four quadrant chart, you know, speaking of, uh, of sort of dissonance in the data, he showed that four quadrant chart and, and it was the, on the vertical axis was technical prowess and the horizontal axis was management vision and lower right was conservative, lower left was beginners, upper left was fashionistas, upper right was digerati. Okay, you want to be in the upper right. And he, and he drew a correlation between those in the Digirati quadrant and profitability. <clears throat> and, I, and I tweeted out, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I would like to, and he's coming on later, I understand, but I'd like to, to understand what the, what was that causality? It's like plus 26% I mean, yeah, over the mean, right? But, but you number. think about how many factors, you know, go into profitability. Right. You know, I talked to the sales guys, uh, you know, the majority of the products, right. I mean, so many factors. You know, can we make that correlation? So. So that was sort of interesting. I would like to understand that, that data a little bit better. Is there really a correlation between you know, excellent data science and profitability? I, I feel like it's early days, and or a lot of the companies that are doing this stuff like Uber aren't profitable. So, <laughs> but certainly, right. guys at Google and Facebook are. So, so it, it, that'll be an interesting discussion. Yeah, it should be a great day. It, uh, we're looking forward to it. We're going to get some really big minds, and as we like to say, we like to go out to events, get the smartest people we can find, get them on, and really share the insights. So it's a great way to kick off 2016. Well, it definitely fits in, in our in our wheelhouse. You know, one of our pillars, you know, big data cloud infrastructure, software-led infrastructure, and big data is a really key theme for us in uh, in 2016. Uh, we'll be at Spark Summit East. Uh, you know, obviously kicking off here, Spark Summit East. We're, I believe we'll be doing Spark Summit West. We've got big data 
uh, SV and NYC. We've got the Hadoop Summit. We'll be, a, uh, I believe, at Hadoop Summit in Dublin this year. So uh, uh, that's going to be really exciting. So, all right, so big day today. A lot of practitioners coming on, uh, some technologists, going to geek out with the data scientists. So keep it right there, everybody. Jeff and I will be right back after these words. We're live here at the Eventi Hotel in New York City at Rapid Minor Wisdom. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back.